Good morning and mayong buntag to all of us. It is a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's word to you this morning. Speaking of blessings, let me ask you, what are the blessings that the Lord has given to you? Or what are the blessings that you have received from God? Sige nga, uh, let's have some time to think and reflect on it. As blessings, many of us may start with our good health. The fact of being alive, especially in the middle of this COVID pandemic. Next, blessings might be our families, our meaningful relationships that we have at this time. Then we would probably think of the house that we are living in, especially if it's under our name. Then we could also consider the, the jobs, the careers, the businesses, the positions that God has put us into. We could also consider as blessings our education and experiences, the trainings that we have had in the past that allowed us to be who we are at present. And our list could go on and on with people and things that God has given to us throughout the years. The next question that I would like to ask you, my brothers and sisters, if God wants to take them back now or at any time in your life, are you willing to give them up? Are you willing to let go of all these blessings when God asks them from you? Yes? If you were able to quickly and wholeheartedly answer yes, congratulations, I believe you have the same mind as the Apostle Paul. In Philippians 3, 7-8, Paul said, But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. This is such a wonderful conviction coming from the Apostle Paul. Let us take in consideration, however, that Paul was not an ordinary Jew like Peter and the first disciples. Paul was a rich and elite Jew who grew up privileged. From the book of Acts, we know that Paul and his parents were Roman citizens. This meant that he had rights and privileges not enjoyed by other Jews. We also know that he can afford education under the prominent Pharisee Gamaliel. So we can say in social status, Paul was well off. Also in terms of religious righteousness, he was also up there. We can read in verse 6, As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Paul looked at himself before as already good and righteous as a Pharisee. Doesn't this remind you of someone in the parable that Jesus told in Luke 18? About the Pharisee who prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. That man could have been Paul. I would say that Paul was a poster boy for the Pharisees. The fact is, Paul liked being the poster boy of the Pharisees, to the point that he was arresting the disciples of Jesus on their behalf. Paul had a bright future as a Pharisee. He was smart, educated, hardworking, and driven. He thought he was obeying God until the moment that he encountered the Lord Jesus on the road. After Paul encountered the true God, his life was never the same. His direction in life was completely changed. Jesus revealed his love and knowledge 
to Paul that after a few years, he was able to say, For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and counted them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. What was it that Paul experienced with Jesus that he was able to proclaim that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Let us bear in mind that Paul was writing this letter while in prison, and he had already experienced shipwrecks, beatings, stoning, yet he still prayed to share more in the sufferings of Jesus. Paul was not afraid to suffer for the sake of Jesus. Experiencing Jesus to Paul was the hidden treasure in the field or the perfect pearl that he was willing to lose everything for Jesus. But the Apostle Paul knew that he was not done yet. He said, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Though Paul was in prison, he was not resting. For Paul, even if he had already done so much, Following Jesus is not a cruise, but a struggle. But Paul rejoiced in his struggles. He considered it joy to share in the suffering of Jesus because it was nothing compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. So what does it mean to strain forward, to press on towards the goal? Does this mean more ministry, more projects to God? I believe it's not doing more, but actually having less. It means having less of these three things. Less of the world, less of yourself, and more of Jesus, and less of yourself, and more for others. Less of the world. The world celebrates independence from the love and influence of God. Many world leaders would mention God, but how many of them actually follow Jesus? In the Philippines, our preamble starts with, we the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of the Almighty God in order to build a just and humane society, and so on and so forth. But why is it very easy to see injustices and inhumane acts in our society. It's because we are not actually imploring the Almighty God's help. It is hard to move towards Jesus if you are also going with the flow of this group. Next is less of self and more of Jesus. Our fallen self seeks its own pleasure, own comfort, and prestige. We might be doing and acquiring many things in the name of Jesus, but God doesn't actually want them for us. If you bring so many things when going hiking, you will not get far. Lastly, less of self, more for others. The Apostle Paul instructs us to imitate the humility of Jesus in submitting to the will of God. He also said to be humble towards one another in building one another up instead of taking each other down. We can move faster when we pull each other forward. Again, what does it mean to strain forward? and press towards the goal, less of the world, less of self, and more of Jesus, less of self, 
more for others. Now all of these things are easily said than done. So let me leave this simple challenge for us. Brothers and sisters, if what we think about most is our jobs, career, business, reputation, getting more money, financial stability, comfort, pleasure, even the success of our children, we need to turn back to God. Jesus said, For what does it profit a man and his family to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Don't start with the blessings. Start with Jesus. Also, brothers and sisters, if what we think about most is our ministry, the next worship service, the next Bible study, the next prayer meeting, the next person who needs our help, the next disciple, we need to turn to back to God as well. We are in the danger of what Peter Scazzaro refers to as using God to run away from God. We are like Martha, distracted with serving God without being with Jesus and enjoying Jesus first like Mary. As I end in prayer, allow God to speak into our hearts. Let us allow Him to reveal the things that we are still holding tightly in this world. Let us pray for Jesus' humility to lead us to desire to know Him more and gain Christ more. Let us pray. Our wonderful, loving, most gracious Father God, together with our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we come to you, Lord, today, opening our hearts to you, that you will examine us, you will humble us before you, and allow us, Lord God, to submit ourselves before you, Lord God. May you reveal to us the things, the areas in our lives that we are yet to surrender to you, to willingly give up to you, in order that we will know you more. That we will enjoy you more, Lord Jesus, and be able to discover the surpassing work of experiencing you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you for your love that is constant with us, Lord God, and your faithfulness. That you never let us go and you always wait for us. You are with us in this journey and you will wait for us at the end of your loving arms. To you, Lord Jesus, we submit our lives and our prayer. Amen. Following Jesus is not easy. In fact, it is impossible if God himself is not with us. That is the reason that Jesus sent to us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Along with the Holy Spirit, Jesus also left his words for us, as well as sacraments that will remind us of him. One of those beautiful sacraments is the Holy Communion or the Lord's Table. On Jesus' last meal with his disciples, he took the bread and said to them, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This bread symbolizes the body of Jesus, beaten and broken. He accepted the pain and the shame because of his love for the Father first and his love for us. Brothers and sisters, let us take the bread.
Then Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. The juice or wine that you have symbolizes the blood offering the Lord Jesus gave for the forgiveness of our sin. Let us drink together. Let us pray with thanksgiving. Lord, we celebrate and we thank you. We are eternally grateful for who you are, for what you have done, and what you are doing in our lives. We praise God, our Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank God for all of you. Have a blessed Sunday to all.